here comes the money. You're now listening to the Gambling with Gold podcast with Jason Gold. Presented by Champions Round. All right, Steph, let's get to where we're thinking about our early best bets of the week for NFL Week 14. I'll let you start us off. What are you kind of leaning for for your favorite bet of the week thus far? Okay. So I have three that jumped out at me immediately when I looked. You can no longer get this number. It's funny. Every week now I say that I don't bet on my team. This season has caused me to bet on my team. I like the New York Giants plus six. I believe it's a plus seven now. Also looking at that Miami Chargers game, I like the over in that game. at I think I got it at 52. And then Baltimore plus two and a half. Uh, I think that people are forgetting that Huntley is one of the best backups in the league if not the best backup in the league. And I think that he'll have no no trouble keeping this game close. All right, so let's go through all those games because my early best bet, the number one on my board right now, is the New York Giants at plus seven. So we're in agreement there. Why don't you explain a little bit why, from your perspective, as a fan of the New York Giants, why you think this could be a good matchup and they can cover the touchdown at home? Yeah, it's interesting that this opened under a touchdown, actually. Philly's lost the last two years at MetLife. It's funny. Last year, I was also at Ford Field watching this game on my phone. I will be doing that as well this year. Um, Eagles are one and four against the spread on the road. I think the Eagles win. I think this could be an upset of the week. Don't don't get me wrong. I think the Eagles win, but I think the Giants have continued to show that their defense is better than maybe it looks on paper. They stay in these games. Um, And the Eagles have shown flaws. We've talked about this. I mean, now for at least four weeks, they they continue to show that they have some weaknesses. I think that they can get Saquon Barkley going in this game. Um, they they have they won't struggle as badly as everyone's expecting. I mean, I like it based on the fact that I, I'm there are two teams that I'm actively looking to fade the rest of the season. They're both of top the NFC. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Minnesota Vikings for very different reasons. The Eagles is because they have a limited playbook. Jalen Hurts has been absolutely phenomenal. But that defense, you can run the ball on them, which is better as you get later in the season and there's more injuries. And with the limited playbook, as soon as people start having enough tape on what they want to do, look, A.J. Brown's still going to be phenomenal. They're still going to be able to run the ball. I'm just saying you can hold them from these 30-point games like they had last week against Tennessee, a team that was not ready, and you can hold them to 21, 24 points, hold them in the second half, and keep these games close, especially when they become a favorite of seven points on the road against a divisional foe who is also has a winning record. They're 7-4-1 this season. The Giants are not a walkover. Brian mm-hmm. Dable will have his team ready. They'll have a good plan for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think the seven's too high. I think it's going to come down. So I would bet the seven now. I think it'll end at six and a half or six. Go bet the Giants now. I think it's a good bet. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to our upset watch for week 14. But my other best bets on the board right now that I'm looking at, I haven't locked in all of these, but here's where I am. Cleveland plus six against Cincinnati. This line's out of control, absolutely yeah. out of control. You have Deshaun, who looked absolutely terrible against Houston last week. Cincinnati has looked phenomenal. I think they're 10-1 and one against the spread in their last 11 games. Joe Burrow looks great. They look like a team that's rolling. They could end up being the number one seed in the AFC. However, go look at Joe Burrow against the Browns. It's just a bad matchup. He's 0-4 yeah. all time against them. I'm not saying the Browns are going to win this game. But plus six is outrageous. So give me the Browns all day there. Detroit minus two. I think everybody in our community, in the gambling community, has already bet the Lions this week. There's a reason. We're trying to actively fade the Minnesota Vikings this season and for the rest of the season. 5.2 yards per play, 6.0 yards per play against. That is the worst differential of any team that has started the the season 10-2. and And also their point differential is insane. The Vikings should have lost last week to the Jets. I think that they lose this week to the Lions, who, quite frankly, I think they're a better team. I just think the Lions are a better team than the Minnesota Vikings right now. The Vikings keep pulling it out of our ass. Maybe they will continue to do that the rest of the season. But guess what? I'm going to keep fading them the rest of the way through. Their expected win by Pythag right now is 6.2 wins. That is the greatest differential in the NFL this season. Fade the Vikings the rest of the year. The other two that I have on the board – You mentioned one of them, Baltimore. I actually bought it up to three. This game is always a field goal game. Either way, it doesn't matter who's starting, who's playing for either team. Tyler Huntley is capable of running this offense like we saw at the end of last season. 
I don't think the Steelers should be favored by three versus anybody at this point, especially given the fact that it is a divisional team in the Baltimore Ravens with a still a very elite defense. I like the under in that game as well. Last one on the board. This is the gross one of the week, but got to do it. Denver Broncos plus 10, hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. No! No! Jason, no! Got to do it. Got to got to do it. Everybody wants to bet the Kansas City Chiefs off a loss. They're going to sleepwalk through this game. Denver has an elite defense. You're playing at mile high. It's a difficult place to play. I know Mahomes' record. Look, he's like 35 and over or whatever, in, or 35 and 1 in December and, and November. Yeah. You know what his record against the spread is? It's like 17, 18, and 1. He's not elite at covering these spreads, especially big numbers. Give me the Denver Broncos at plus 10. I know it's gross. I don't want to watch the game at all. I'm just trying to win you folks some money. Yeah, I'm. so here's the thing, too, about the Kansas City Chiefs is they are, like, not good at covering the spread at home. I don't have the number in front of me, but a couple of weeks ago, I think they had still yet to cover one. They've probably covered at this point at least one of their home games, but they just don't cover the spread at home this season for whatever reason it is. I don't hate it, but I just – I'm not, I am not doing it. I am so anti Broncos and Russell Wilson. I think that this defense is going to give up on this team very shortly. And we're going to see them stop trying because it's like, well, for what? Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I will say this per action network, 27% of the bets and 56% of the money is on the Broncos in this game. And this line has come down to nine in most places. So I'm telling you, if you can get the nine and a half, it's a nice little number. Everybody's going to try and tease this down if it gets to nine to three. Don't do that. I'm just telling you the Broncos are going to be feisty in this game. 